was, and I had, you know, I was diagnosed with polycystic disease, which is one of the most, I don't, I, I you could you could say embarrassing, but it's just so you feel so vulnerable at that moment in time. Like it's almost like you're scared to do what you love, and that should never be the case. And you know, my speech therapist and you know ENTs got in touch with Eric, and he nursed me back from nothing to sing better now with more control than I ever have. So, you know, between my doctors and Eric, Eric, Eric is a doctor, he's a voice doctor. Don't just look at him as a vocal coach, he's a doctor. One of the most rewarding aspects of my career so far has been the opportunity to help singers heal from various forms of vocal injury. But what has troubled me over the years is the fact that amongst pre professional singers, vocal injuries seem to be more and more common. And what bothers me the most is that they're so preventable. You may have heard the recent news about Sam Smith. Not long ago it was Adele, um, Tamar Braxton, Ariana Grande. Um, different forms of vocal damage befall many singers and every time it happens publicly, my inbox is flooded with messages from you guys about um, do I have vocal damage? How do I know? How do I prevent it? If I do have it, how do I fix it? What do I do? And this video is not meant to act as a comprehensive um, training course to become an otolaryngologist, but rather I want to give you some practical tips on how to identify warning signs um, of potential voice injury and also what to do if you think you have it, but more than anything how to prevent it. Lastly, there's so much that can be said about this topic that it's very possible that I might leave something out and forget something. And if I do, then just go to aapproach.com. I'll put a link to the specific blog in the info box for the video. But I'll make sure there'll be an article with this so you can check out all the details. Links in, uh, you know, specific terms and crap in the, uh, in the article part that accompanies the video. So, link in the info box. Alright, let's move on. Step one, get over yourself. You are not above knowing this, and no matter how much talent you have or think you have, talent does not protect your voice from being injured. I had a student last night, a new student, <laughs> and he was doing some exercises incorrectly. He's experiencing vocal damage. It was our first session, and he came to me for help. As I'm trying to instruct him and warning him about some of the wrong things he's doing, he's going, oh, no, no, I'm, I'm not a beginner. I know that. You know, I've had training. Don't let your pride block you off from knowledge or stop you from listening to your body. Vocal injury rarely happens abruptly. There are almost always warning signs. And sometimes, from my experience, I've been doing this for over 10 years. Um, I'm 75 years old. No, I'm just okay. I've been doing this for over a decade, though. People are very prideful, especially some celebrity-ish people. I'm not going to name names. Don't tempt me. But people get very prideful, and they feel that they're above, or I'm not a beginner, I'm so-and-so. Even people who are not famous get like that. You might be one of those people. Take a moment and be real with yourself. Don't be afraid to be the beginner, no matter how much experience you have as a vocalist, no matter how well-known you are. Don't be afraid to be open to the possibility that you might have some lifelong habits that are really, really wrong. So be aware of that and get out of your own way. And what usually happens is um, singers will feel some hoarseness or they'll feel strain. And what I get when I, when I see some of you in the workshops, when I meet you, when you come to me for a lesson, you go, oh yeah, it hurts, but I know I'm doing it right. Stop that. If it hurts, you are wrong. You're doing something wrong. Whether you sound good or not, that's a matter of opinion. That's a matter, it's very subjective. And so if you think I can sing great or not, it's an opinion. If someone thinks you're great or not, that's an opinion. But health, that can be proven definitively. So if you feel pain, something's wrong. If you're going hoarse, something's wrong. If you feel like there's a lump in your throat when you're done singing, something is wrong. If you're chronically hoarse, especially something's wrong. If you're missing, if there's a big gap where your mixed voice used to be, if there's air where your head voice and falsetto used to be, if it hurts to sing, don't ignore these things and stop rationalizing them away. These are not okay for anyone. Oh, well, you know, the weather. Oh, well, we did sing for a long time and it was a two hour show. Oh, well, you know, um, I just, I'm just tired. No, your body is trying to tell you something. Listen to it. If you experience sudden phlegm, 
and you're not sick. Now, if it's, it's different if you have a cold. But if you were totally fine before and then suddenly when you're singing, you have all this phlegm, you have to clear your throat a lot, your body is trying to tell you something. It's, it's a body's response to trauma. So don't ignore these things if you, if you feel like you're coughing all of a sudden. And again, if you're sick, that's different. But if you suddenly feel like you have to cough when you sing, if you're, ah, uh, <laughs> Your body is trying to tell you something. These are warning signs, especially the hoarseness. A lot of you write off hoarseness. If you're hoarse, for, if you're hoarse at all, that's a problem. But especially if you're hoarse for extended periods of time, for two weeks or more and you're hoarse and you're raspy, that is not okay. Specifically, unintentional rasp. So if you're choosing to, uh, or something like that for style, that's different. But if your voice is raspy, despite your best efforts for it not to be, that's, it's time for concern. Not time to panic, but time to con for concern and to be aware that there's some things you need to change. Lastly, loss of edge. This one is a little hard to hear for some people with an untrained ear, but there's a certain crispness and clarity to a healthy voice, regardless of sex, regardless of voice type. There's a certain kind of clarity and crispness and edge to the voice. If your voice starts to get husky, and um, sometimes, it's, it, sometimes it can be more subtle than this, but if you start to lose edge, take note, your body is trying to tell you something. This is the thing. In the beginning, when you're experiencing these warning signs, and they're temporary, when the hoarseness goes away after a few hours or after a day or two, or when the frog of your throat subsides after a while, your body is trying to nudge you to change your vocal behavior. You're doing something wrong that you need to change. But if you don't change it, if the, um, if the harmful behavior persists, then the damage can become permanent or at the very least more long term. So if you keep bashing your cords together, initially swelling will happen, phlegm, hoarseness. Do it enough and you'll start to get calluses. Just like with any other part of your body, our bodies are set on survival mode. Your body doesn't really know that you're trying to sing. It doesn't care. All it knows is you're bashing your cords together in a very unhealthy way. They don't move like this, but you're bashing your cords together in a very unhealthy way. And they're going to protect themselves. And so eventually calluses will form the same way they would on your hands. And so, maybe not exactly the same, but you get the idea. And so, and if those calluses form, your cords can't really close properly. And if your cords can't really close properly, it's going to be harder and harder for you to get that clear, powerful tone. And then you're going to push harder, and then you're going to make things worse. And that's just one example of what can go wrong. Now, before you start really, really freaking out, know that most, almost every singer has experienced some of these issues at some point, especially before they get really well trained. If the effects are temporary, then you might be okay, as long as you heed my advice. The voice, while delicate, is also quite resilient. And your body is really good at healing itself if you give it a chance, if you afford it um, an environment that's conducive for healing. So, um, one of the best things you could do is daily vocalization, healthy vocalization. And shameless plug, phase one, that you can get at airapproach.com, is full of advice for healthy vocalization. I had to, okay? I'm giving you free stuff, but I had to plug it. But it really is pretty great. Um, so, that being said, when you vocalize, you want to remember to maximum clarity with minimum effort. A lot of you guys over push. I don't care how breathy, I don't care how breathy you want to sing. I don't care how breathy you want to sing when you're really singing. Um, sound like one of those old 90s Hot Wheels commercials. Hot Wheels leading the way! You know, <laughs> anyway, I don't care how breathy a tone you want to use when you're actually performing, but when you're vocalizing, a crisp, clear tone is important. Yes, you do need some effort, but you want to find what's the least amount of effort I can put forth to attain maximum clarity. So this would be wrong, and I see it a lot. Be real with yourself if you're doing it. This is right. I've got a clear tone, and I'm not killing myself to get it. Or, I can have edge there. If you tried the he 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 exercise, I'll put a link either on the video or in the article. I have a free video on YouTube for it if you haven't seen it already. But if you're doing the he 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 and you can't hear any edge, that's a problem. I'm not saying to panic, but that means that you're not as strong as you could be. It's conditioning. It's like fitness. And so it's not, again, it's not about talent or even about knowing. It's about conditioning. Is your body well trained? So if you're someone who's, who was overweight, um, I used to be 230 pounds, and so there's, I had to work out and change certain things daily to get to 
to get to this point, to get to this point. I can't say, oh, well, I've worked out before. I know how to do that. I don't have to keep working out. No, but so many of you hit me up and you say, when can I stop training? I mean, I've vocalized the stuff before. I've done that before. It doesn't work that way. It's conditioning based. These are real muscles and real muscle memory memories. You have to train them daily. Um, your vocal folds can lose tone or they can gain tone. They can lose flexibility or they can gain flexibility. So it's really important that you get healthy blood flow through there daily. Also your diaphragm, it's real. And for years people thought that it couldn't be strengthened, that it was totally passive. And in a way that's true. And I don't want to get into to the semantics of that. But daily breathing exercises really make a difference. The way that a lot of voice teachers teach that if you know how to breathe, then you know and then you move on. The A approach stance is that we treat breathing like fitness. You do breathing exercises every day, regardless of how well you, you think you breathe. <laughs> so you keep doing it to maintain strength. And the better your respiratory system is developed, the more vocal protection you have. I'm making a very long, boring story short, but doctors have always marveled at how quickly I'm able to get students to recover. And it's because it's not very popular to teach breathing today, most singers don't understand it, and quite honestly, a lot of voice teachers don't understand the intricacies of the respiratory system. But um, if you work your breathing daily, I'll put another link to another free YouTube video up, it can do a lot to protect your instrument. And it's a powerful tool in um, kind of creating a shock absorber effect, if you will, for your voice. I want to be crystal clear here, because recently I had another new student who was like, um, oh, I vocalize every day. And the scales were like, ah, like just singing ah on scales. When I talk about healthy vocalization, I mean that you need to do exercises that specifically help to train your, your diaphragm and your vocal cords to communicate better together. Or um, another way to say it is to refine the stream of breath flowing through your vocal folds or to balance that, that pressure within your body. I'm talking techniques like lip rolls or any kind of trill really, like those are really great. Um, the he 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 is a gentle one, um, if you do it well. <laughs> it teaches your body how to use concentrated bursts of breath through um, efficiently closing chords as opposed to bashing. Um, trills are very safe, he 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 is very safe. There are many other exercises on phase one and phase two of the A approach program. But um, almost anything in the a professional warm-up that I have up on YouTube really is, um, is meant to be therapeutic and there for daily use. So, but it's, you're trying to train your body to use breath efficiently and to not overload your vocal folds. That's where a lot of vocal damage, I guess is, you could simplify it and say arguably that almost all vocal damage occurs from that excess muscle tension, that excess pressure. And so just over pushing basically. The key is to learn how to use controlled effort and controlled force as opposed to brute force. And techniques like lip rolls and trills and he 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 and the other stuff in the warm up are good for that. And you need to do them every day. Um, training for me, especially for preventing vocal injury, is not so much a matter of knowing. A lot of you always want to tell me what you know. That's, and if you're feeling sore or hoarse, then it's obviously not working for you. You've got to do daily exercise. The only way out is through. And I know that a lot of you want, to, want me to tell you that there's a way you can do this without having to work every day. And I can't honestly tell you that. If you're serious about keeping your voice healthy, if you're someone who's pursuing a professional career, daily vocal exercise is essential in the way that regular phys conventional physical exercise would be to an Olympic athlete. If you're just singing once or twice a week for church, Maybe you don't have to be as disciplined. You might have a lot more time to chill out. Maybe you don't care if your voice gets a little damaged. But if you're trying to have a professional career where you literally can't afford to not be able to sing or not be able to have your voice, daily vocal exercise is not optional. It's mandatory. You've got to do it. We also have a, um, a professional warm-up that's, I'll put a link. There'll be links galore. So either click, click the link for the blog and I'll have all the links there or I'll flash them up on the screen, I don't know, whatever. There'll be links somewhere, just look. So let's talk worst case scenario. You've got hoarseness that won't go away, um, range loss that's persisted for days or even weeks. Um, it might actually hurt to talk or hurt to sing. You need to seek help, and so you need to go to an, a voice doctor, you need to go to an ENT. Um, you need to go to, to an expert. You can also go to an A approach instructor, 
um, if you just report when you, you know, send your email that you suspect that you might have vocal damage um, of some sort and you want to come to me and I can help guide you a little bit depending on what area you're in. I might even be able to refer you to somebody. Um, but usually, before you panic, <laughs> and I'm, I, if you're watching this and you're like, who is he talking to? I get so many messages in my inbox of people panicking and freaking out, thinking that their voices are just destroyed. I'm like, I have to see you immediately. I think my voice is, is hurt. You know, I've never had training before. Before you freak out, know that usually the protocol is pretty simple. Usually you have um, some vocal rest. It might be a couple weeks. Um, depends, everybody's situation is a little different. And then usually they'll have you work with um, like a speech language pathologist or whatever to kind of do some exercises and some healthier habits and then or they'll send you straight to a voice teacher or you'll do both and you'll just train. For most cases it's rest followed by training to help you um, th like therapy and training to help you just very naturally um, heal yourself and, and fix whatever the problem was before. Only in extreme cases is surgery necessary and that's rare and I've worked with some people in most cases, if you start to change the behavior, you can make a full recovery. And even in a few cases where I've met singers that I felt were in a very severe, severely injured place, they even they made recoveries. Your body is pretty miraculous in that way. But what I will say is that if you think you have a problem now, now is the time to start making some changes. And so, to make a quick recap, listen to your body. Pain and discomfort should not be ignored ever. It's not okay. I don't, no, stop making excuses. It's not okay. Two, daily breathing and vocal exercises can work wonders in preventing damage. If you do them, it's not enough to know. Stop telling me, oh, I've done that before. That's stupid. You have to do them every day. You have to keep the muscles strong. You have to keep the reflexes strong. We're training muscle memory and we're also strengthening actual muscles. Number three, if, if problems persist for longer than a few days or God forbid a few weeks, then go see someone. But also rest assured that the likely protocol will just be a little bit of vocal therapy followed by some vocal training with a qualified voice teacher. Also understand that not every voice teacher is qualified to help someone who has, who's dealing with vocal damage. Um, even within the A approach team, certain voice teachers are qualified to help with um, singers suffering from that and certain ones aren't. So you want someone who has a good track record of um, having healed voices basically, they're helping voices to heal, I'm, I'm not touching people and healing them, but helping people to heal. So, um, and lastly, don't panic. <laughs> Educate yourself and a lot of times the fear comes from ignorance of not knowing and people listen to what their friends say and stuff like that. No, just, <laughs> unless you're like coughing up blood, there's a good chance that you can come through this okay. All right, I've seen some pretty powerful things happen. Um, I strongly recommend our phase one program. If you truly feel advanced, you could try phase two, but I still suggest starting with phase one. Like I said before, don't let your pride block you from learning. I don't care how experienced you are. Just don't, don't be stupid. Don't let your pride and your desire to kind of prove, you don't have anything to prove. Just be wise. Humble yourself and be open to some knowledge that can really help you. So, phase one, aapproach.com if you want to book a lesson with me or with one of my associate instructors, you can go to aapproach.com as well. And um, there's a link in this video, not in the video, but in the info box with this video, where you can <laughs> see everything kind of written out in a more concise, non rambly way with plenty of links to everything I've been talking about today. And um, yeah. I guess for now that's it and I'll be trying to do some more uh, videos like this more regularly in the future. Um, follow me on Instagram, follow me on Facebook and give me your questions and um, I'll try to tackle as much as I can. So I think the next most popular topic right now is people want to know what they should eat and drink in regards to like helping to support healthy singing and blah blah blah. So I'll definitely be covering that one soon. Um, along with how do I find my own voice, my real voice. So stay tuned for those, and until next time, peace.